uh, if we could put uh, slide three up, I promise, some years ago I made a wager and I promised to report before the lunch how the wager was coming out. And I've been doing that regularly, but it probably it seems appropriate since it's developed this far to point out a, a rather obvious lesson, which was what I hoped to drive home to some degree by offering to make the wager originally. Um, incidentally, when I offered to make the wager, uh, namely that somebody could pick out five hedge funds and I would take the, the uh, unmanaged S&P index used by Vanguard Fund, and I would bet that over a 10-year period that the unmanaged index would beat these five funds that were all being managed, presumably. They could pick any five funds that were managed by people who were charging incredible sums to people because of their supposed expertise. And fortunately, there's an organization called, or at least you go to, if you go to the internet, if you put in longbets.org, it's a terribly interesting website. Uh, you can have a lot of fun with it because people take the opposite side of various propositions that have a long tail to them and, and make bets as to the outcome. And then they both give their, each side gives their reasons. And you can go to that website and you can find bets about, you know, whether, what population will be doing 15 years from now or all kinds of things. And hedge funds, these were funds of funds. In other words, there was a, one hedge fund at the top and then that manager picked out who he thought were the best managers underneath and then bought into these other funds in turn. So that the five funds of funds represent maybe 100 or 200 hedge funds underneath. Now bear in mind that the hedge fund, the fellow making the bet, uh, was picking out funds where the manager on top was getting paid perhaps a half a percent a year plus a cut of the profits for merely picking out who he thought were the best managers underneath who in turn were getting paid maybe one and a half or two percent plus a cut of the funds on profits. But certainly the guy at the top was incentivized to try and pick out great funds and at the next level those people were presumably incentivized too. So the result is after eight years and several hundred hedge fund managers being involved is that now the totally unmanaged fund by Vanguard with very, very, very minimal costs is now 40 some points ahead of the group of hedge funds. Now that may sound like a terrible result for the hedge funds, but it's not a terrible result for the hedge fund managers. <laughs> these, these managers, A, you've got this top level manager that's charging probably a half a percent, I don't know that for sure. And down below you've got managers that are probably charging one and a half to two percent. So if you have a couple percentage points sliced off every year, uh, that is a lot of money. We have two managers at Berkshire that each manage nine billion dollars for us. They both ran hedge funds before. If they had a two and 20 arrangement with Berkshire, which is not uncommon in the hedge fund world, they would be getting 180 million dollars each, you know, merely for breathing annually. Uh, that, I mean, that, it's a compensation scheme that is unbelievable uh, to me. Uh, and that's one reason I made this bet. Uh, but what I'd like you to do is for a moment imagine that in this room we have the entire, you people, that in this room we have the entire, you people own all of America. That all the stocks in America are owned by this group. You are the, you are the, uh, the Berkshire 18,000 or whatever it is that have somehow managed to accumulate all the wealth in the country. And let's assume we just divide it down the middle and on this side we put half the people, half of all the investment capital in the world, and that capital is what a certain presidential candidate might call low energy. Uh, in fact, they have no energy at all. They, they buy half of everything that exists in the investment world, 50 percent, everyone on the side. And so now half of it is owned by these, by these uh, no energy people. They don't, they don't look at stock prices. They don't turn on business channels. They don't read the Wall Street Journal. They don't do anything. They're just, they are a slovenly group that just sits for year after year after year owning half of the, half of the country, half of the, America's business. Now, what's their result going to be? Their result is going to be exactly average as how American business does, because they own half of all of it. But they have no, no expenses, no nothing. Now, what's going to happen with the other half? The other half are what we call the hyperactives. And the hyperactives, their gross result is also going to be half, right? They can't, the whole, the whole uh, uh, has to be the 
some of the parts here, and this group by definition can't, can't change from its half of the ultimate investment results. This half is going to have the same gross results. They're going to have the same results as the low ener no energy period people. And they're also going to have terrific expenses because they're all going to be moving around, hiring hedge funds, hiring consultants, paying, paying lots of commissions and everything. And that half as a group has to do worse than this half. The people who don't do anything have to do better than the people that are trying to do better. I mean, it's that simple. And I, I hoped through making this bet to actually create a little example of that. But th that offer was open to anybody. And I would make incidentally the same offer now, except you know, being around in 10 years to collect gets a little more problematic as we go through life. Uh, but it, is, it seems so elementary. But I will guarantee you that no endowment fund, no public pension fund, no extremely rich person wants, wants to sit in that part of the auditorium. They just can't believe that because they have billions of dollars to invest, that they can't go out and hire somebody who will do better than average. I, I hear from them all the time. So this group over here, supposedly sophisticated people, generally richer people, uh, hire consultants, and no consultant in the world is going to tell you just buy an S&P index fund and sit for the next 50 years. You don't get to be a consultant that way. And you certainly don't get an annual fee that way. So the consultant's got every motivation in the world to tell you this year I think we should concentrate more on international stocks or this year this manager is particularly good on the short side. And so they come in and they talk for hours and you pay them a large fee and they always suggest something other than just sitting on your rear end and participating in American business without cost. And then those consultants, after they get their fees, they in turn recommend to you other people who charge fees, which, as you can see, over a period of time, cumulatively, eat up capital like crazy. So I would suggest that what I felt sure, I didn't feel sure because nothing, can't tell for sure about any 10-year period, but I certainly felt very probable or I wouldn't have stuck my neck out. It, it just demonstrates so dramatically. I've talked to huge pension funds, and I've taken them through the math, and when I leave, they go out and hire a bunch of consultants and pay them a lot of money. And I, it, it's just unbelievable. And the consultants always change the recommendations a little bit from year to year. They can't change them 100% because then it didn't look like they knew what they were doing the year before. So they tweak them from year to year. And they come in and they have lots of charts and PowerPoint presentations. And they recommend people who in turn are going to char charge them a lot of money. And they say, well, you can only get the best talent by paying two and 20 or something of the sort. And the flow of money from the hyperactive to what I call the helpers is dramatic. Well, this group over here sits here and absolutely gets the record of American industry. So I hope you'll realize that for most, for the population as a whole, American business has done wonderfully. And the net result of hiring professional management you know, is a huge minus. And at the bookstore, we have a little book called Where Are the Customer's Yachts, written by Fred Schwett. I read it when I was about 10 years old. Been updated a few, it hadn't been updated, but new editions have been put up few times, but the basic lessons are there. That lesson is told in that book from 1940. It's so obvious, and yet all the commercial push is behind telling you that you've got to think about doing something today that's different than you did yesterday. You don't have to do that. You just have to sit back and let American industry do its job for you. Charlie, do you have anything to add to my sermon? Well, you're talking to a bunch of people who have solved their problem by buying Berkshire Hathaway. That worked even better. And there have been a few of these managers or managers sure. who've actually succeeded. There are a few in the universities who are really good, but it's a tiny group of people. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. And when I was given the job of naming two in 1969, I knew, I knew two. I knew a couple of others. Charlie wasn't interested in managing more money then, and my friend Walter Schloss would not, he would not scale up well, although he had a fabulous record over 45 years or thereabouts. But, you know, that was all I could come up with at that time. And, and uh, fortunately, you know, I did have a couple. And the people who went with Sequoia Fund have been well served if they stayed for the whole period. But the, the people, there's been far, far, far more money made by, Wall, by people in Wall Street through salesmanship abilities than through investment abilities. There are a few people out there that are going to have an outstanding investment record. But there are very few of them. And the people you pay to have identify them, don't know how to identify them, and, and uh, they do know how to sell you, and, and, and that's my message.